Hello, welcome to a series of videos uh, aimed at uh, qu quickly introducing Python for programmers, for computer scientists, for software engineers, for coders. So if you already have some experience of coding and just want to grab Python, um, this is aimed at you. There will be a, another series of videos aimed at learning to program from scratch in Python um, to complement this. Okay, now this series of videos uh, will be broken down into small chunks um, so that you don't have to sit and watch a whole hour all in one go. So this is the introductory episode and it will just set the context for what we're going to do. The next instalment I'll aim for people who can program say in one language and, and, and have a small number of years experience and, and then I'll follow that up with Python for coding experts who know a huge number of languages and and just want me to identify the essential differences and esoteric features of Python um, that they might not pick up from the normal literature. So that's my plan and I hope that you find these useful. Okay, so let's start with looking at some example code and here we go, I, I've got some Python opened on my screen. This is Windows and I will also look at uh, a Mac in a second. So that's one of the things to say about Python. It's, it's pretty portable across a lot of platforms, whether that be Windows based, different versions of Windows, uh, Apple products, Mac OS, different versions. Uh, Linux and, and, and different flavors of Linux and Unix. So that's one of the advantages of Python is one piece of source code can work across all those platforms and a lot of the examples I will be showing you do work across all the different platforms and that's one of the skills we'll get to in the advanced material is, is how to ensure that you can program portably. So I've opened a few Python tools here which I, I'm going to show about but I'll just uh, note like I've talked about different versions of operating systems that are different versions of Python and you'll see here I've got uh, Python 2 and I've got Python 3 so those are the major versions of Python that people are working with and you'll see I put, wrote a piece of code here where I can actually at runtime test um, the version of Python. So Python is a interpreted scripting language um, w which is different from other languages that are compiled in some form into machine code and that has an interesting effect. Now I'm going to show it in lots of tools. That will be another episode where we can talk about which tools and where you get them from and installing them. So one of the things I'm assuming that as a programmer you know how to find the documentation. So uh, it's probably best to go to the official documentation but using your search engine you can find uh, various uh, discussion places and tutorial sites. So I'm not substituting them. I'm uh, j just assuming that that's what you do in your normal everyday coding. So let's look at what I've got on my screen that you could work with. So you can work with Python in a text editor and, and I've got Emacs here so that's one of the text editors you could work with. You could work with Notepad um, plus plus and, and I've got some Python there you could work with Windows Notepad but I'm not showing that but also uh, the Python environment comes uh, with its own tools and, and, and this one is running in a, in, in a Python tool called idle uh, which comes with Python so it, 
it's probably best to work with an, a language aware editor and you notice that Notepad++, Idle and Emacs are all language aware and highlight them and, and flag up syntax errors quite often as you're typing and they might have a run button to enable you to run the code. Um, but for those of you who are wondering about other tools, um, yes you can work with Python in Visual Studio on a Windows platform. Uh, that works fine but uh, some of the other tools are better. And one that's particularly good for working with is Jupyter which is a browser-based uh, Python integrated development environment um, that's, that's quite useful and uh, we can say more about that and probably I'll do my examples of Python in Jupyter and, and if you really wanted to you can run Python uh, in a command prompt and as I said it's an interpreted scripting language and you can type it one line at a time. Um, so all those environments are possible uh, and I've shown uh, those briefly for you and, and I said it works multi-platform and I'll just switch environments here uh, and I can go to a Mac and I've got a similar set of environments I can use Emacs um, again in a Mac. I can use uh, the built-in uh, text edit. Um, it is possible to do it in Xcode. I've got Xcode hidden behind there. Um, I've got Jupyter and, um, and I've got Idle. So we can run uh, it in Idle Editor. Um, just like we can on a Windows platform and you can do it from terminal in the command prompt just as we did on Windows. So you can see there's a lot of identity between the Windows development environment and the uh, Mac development environment. So Idle and Jupyter are the ones that come with Python um, so it's difficult to work with Xcode and in theory you could do it in Visual Studio in Python on a Mac um, but that doesn't work very well. In fact it doesn't work so well that I had trouble getting it going uh, for this demonstration. And there are some limitations on using Idle on the Mac platform. Uh, if you don't have the settings correct as it says here you can actually crash your Mac. Uh, which is an issue that Apple don't plan to fix um, but there's documentation about it online uh, so I tend to do it in a text editor or in Jupyter Notebook as the recommended environment for a Mac so that's mainly what we need to know and uh, just a short quick snappy video just to get you going and look at some examples of Python on the screen um, that I'm working with and then we'll get on to the detailed tutorial for, um, for programmers after this. So thanks very much.